The Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine denied the information spread through the media about the upcoming closure of Ukrainian airspace. However, the department noted that the decision to suspend flights can be made by the airlines themselves. The Cabinet of Ministers allocated more than 600 million U.S. dollars to ensure flight safety in Ukraine. The funds will be taken from the reserve fund of the state budget. It will be used to provide additional guarantees to insurance and leasing companies amid fears of Russia's invasion in Ukraine. These funds will be directed to a special national bank account. It will guarantee aircraft owners and aircraft insurers whose recovery by the government of Ukraine. Our skies are safe. A safe sea lane is being developed by the Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine. It is necessary for the navigation of ships against the illegal blockade of Black Sea ports by Russia. The work is currently being completed. The press service of the department said at the head of the ministry, Alexander Kubrakov, stressed that in the current situation, the main thing is to prevent risks, protect critical infrastructure and ensure full implementation of Ukraine's trade obligations. In case of a gross violation of international law by the Russian Federation, our task is to prevent risks, protect critical infrastructure and ensure the full implementation of our trade obligations. We are doing everything we can to prevent any attempts to block Ukrainian logistics, including by sea or sky. Economic and social stability in the country is the best tool for combating information warfare, in particular inciting panic. Oleksandr Kubrakov, Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine from Facebook. The first step to cooperation. This is how the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Oleksiy Reznikov, described a telephone conversation with his Belarusian counterpart, Viktor Hrenin. Oleksiy Reznikov called the resumption of dialogue between the two countries the main goal of the talks. According to him, they agreed on further contacts for the development of relations in the defense sphere. The goal of the dialogue is to relieve stress and prevent the escalation of relations. We discuss topical issues and determine the algorithm for further interaction. I see this as a positive signal and the first step towards cooperation. Oleksiy Reznikov, Minister of Defense of Ukraine, on Twitter. Russian aviation fighters, air defense systems, tanks, anti-aircraft systems, armored vehicles and about 30 southern military personnel on the border with Ukraine. On February 10th, Russia began the light result 2022 exercises in Belarus. Maneuvers using nuclear weapons take place at four Belarusian training grounds. Almost simultaneously with them, Moscow began maneuvers at the coast of the occupied Crimea between February 13th and 19th. Russia closed part of the water area along the Ukrainian coast of the Black and Azov Seas and blocked it for navigation. In addition, Russia has concentrated about 100 southern Russian military and equipment in Donbass region. The concentration of the fleet and Russian troops on the border with Ukraine, the naval blockade is the part of the information in hybrid war. According to the experts, Russia is trying to impose its position on Ukraine, had direct dialogue with representatives of illegal armed groups and elections in temporary occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk regions before the occupation of the region. Kremlin also tries to make the West abandon imposing sanctions on Russia and NATO's expansion to the East. It's all a big game. However, it seems to me that Ukraine is not even a goal. On the contrary, its main goal is the United States and U.S. allies in Europe. Russia wants to show military capability and the weakest links in NATO, which turned out to be Hungary, France and Italy, which are ready to negotiate with the Russian Federation one by one and prevent NATO from acting as a united front against the Russian Federation. Putin's main task is to escalate psychosis in order to achieve as many concessions from the West as the Americans. This is the psychology of a guy that they are still afraid and at the last moment they accept his conditions. Whether it comes to war is another question. At the end of December, the American media reported that the Russian invasion could start from the sea. Later, national security advisor to the president of the United States, Jake Sullivan, said that a new aggression, this time from the air, 
failure will occur during the Beijing Olympics. Experts believe that there will be no attack until the end of the Games. Putin's only ally is China. It is in isolation and China really does not want something to overshadow such an event as the Olympics during the Games. And Putin went there to discuss the issues of the West. The Ukrainian authorities urge not to panic. Diplomats are actively negotiating. The army is conducting military exercises. The headquarters of the Joint Forces Operations stress that the situation is under control. Joint Forces Operation Units regularly conduct combat training activities and have everything necessary to deter armed aggression. Please keep calm and trust the armed forces of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Washington announced that they were publishing their intelligence data to disrupt Putin's invasion plans and prevent him from blaming Ukraine or the world for it, reported by Ksenia Buhai Svetlana Sechua TV News. The sports shooting ground is crowded. More than 300 people gathered here. Most of them are civilians, teachers, musicians, cooks and managers. Everyone wants to learn the basics of military affairs. Training takes place at several sites at once. Here they study the tactics of warfare, learn to shoot and provide first aid. Bogdan arrived at the training ground in casual clothes, but the instructor's comments are carried out on an equal terms with everyone. They sharpen the stance when shooting. And what if something happens? Will I wear something dirty, looking for something in the pantries? Women train just like men. Lyudmila is a cook in a kindergarten. Previously, she did not even hold a weapon in her hands. Now she says she wants to be ready for this as well. Just shoot how to hold weapons. Well, medical assistance is also needed. Suddenly, in case of injury, you need to know how to put a stitch there. Music teacher Diana came for tactical training with her husband from Zaporizhia. She said they have already gone through several trainings. They want to put their knowledge into practice. She believes that all the skills will be useful. In case of necessity, we will take up arms. We know how to bandage yourself, how to save a person. Such mass tactical training in civil defense in the city of Dnipro had been carried out for the first time in recent years. The instructors see in the past experienced combatants often gathered at the training ground. Now classes are organized for everyone. Today civilians are over-motivated, motivated not to fight but motivated to defend. Not only beginners came to the open training, but also those who already have shooting skills. Maxim is fond of air soft, but he decided not to miss the opportunity to listen to experienced instructors. Today I want to endure more teamwork with instructors who have combat experience. It is expensive. Particular attention is paid to home care, how to stop bleeding, apply a tourniquet. More and more, feel it. Generally speaking, yes. Change places, try. Instructors say that in order to make the learning process easier, such training should be carried out regularly. This is such an algorithm. If a person finds himself in a difficult position, he does everything like a robot. That's why you need to read it. People, once again, I will say, are not indifferent. I'm glad that our citizens are so patriotic today. Military exercises and territorial defense will begin in the region next week. Reported by Ksenia Buhai, Natalia Husok, UATV News. Recently, the Carnegie Moscow Center published an article with the headline A Split Among Our Own. The material examines the question of how the tightening of the political regime of the Russian Federation pushes the oligarchs and the security forces together. Today, a sharp but still latent conflict has matured within the Russian power elite, the outcome of which depends on the fate of an influential part of Putin's entourage. There were sharp differences as to where to go next, who will prevail politically powerful and economically influential state oligarchs or a bunch of security officials and technocrats obsessed with security and control. It's difficult to say that the oligarchs will completely go against the top leadership, especially against the Russian president, especially in conditions when the power apparatus is 
is still loyal and directly controlled by Putin's commander-in-chief. This situation around the Russian oligarchs and the authorities escalated synchronously with the cooling in relations between the Kremlin and the West. One of the reasons for this was the Russian-Belarusian exercises on the border with Ukraine. According to the experts, the Russian oligarchs do not need a war with Ukraine. The oligarchs, of course, are against. They are afraid of consequences. In particular, it concerns imposition of sanctions, account freeze and seizure of property. I mean, they see with their own eyes negative background. On the other hand, Russian oligarchs are afraid of possible disagreements with the so-called owner of the Kremlin. Suddenly, this is Putin's way of identifying unsuitable elements within the system of power and eliminating them. As Stalin did repeatedly in public, this will be silent and these voices that occasionally arise about the fact that maybe it's not necessary to do this, that maybe it's reckless. <clears throat> Statements by the same Minister of Foreign Affairs of Great Britain and the bill that was actually signed and will enter into force as soon as escalation by Russia begins and a Russian soldier crosses the border. Liberal politics is now impossible in Russia, and as a result, the Russian elites will be driving under the roof of the security forces. The Carnegie Moscow Center concludes in its article, and the state in turn to penetrate more and more into all spheres of private and business activity, reported by Ksenia Buhai, Bogdan Krasavtsev, UATV News.